Chess learners, today I want to share a beautiful chess game that made chess history where Rashid sacrificed his queen in the opening to gain advantages in the game, this game is absolutely mind-blowing and amazing, Rashid Nezmedinov is white and Oleg Chernyakov is black. So let's see this game, Rashid plays e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6 d4, c4, knight d4, knight d4, the Sicilian defense, we have g6, knight c3, bishop g7, bishop e3, knight f6, bishop c4, black castles, bishop b3, and if you've seen my game between Bobby Fischer and Ruben Fine, maybe you remember that in this position Ruben played knight a5 going for this light square bishop and Fischer destroyed it with this e5 move, but in this game, Oleg Chernyakov chose a different approach, in this game. Chernyakov played knight g4. He decided to go for this dark square bishop on e3 and also he opened up the attack on this knight on d4. So on knight g4, Nezmetinov plays queen captures on g4, knight captures on d4, and now queen to h4, so Chernyakov plays queen to a5, pinning that knight on c3 in Rashid castles. So in this position, we have bishop to f6 and in this position, Oleg Chernyakov thought that, well, Nezmetinov would probably realize that this is a drawn position and he would offer a draw. So as the story goes, Chernyakov went for a walk and he was enjoying his stroll and checking out some of the other games and he thought that, well, the only thing Nezmetinov can play is probably queen to h6. I'll just repeat bishop to g7, then again queen to h4 and I'll repeat bishop to f6. And if he plays something like queen to g3, well, then Chernyakov has this idea of playing queen to c3 and after the queen is captured, then knight to e2 check, so we have king to h1, grabbing the queen and this is better for black as white's pawn structure is all messed up. But even if this is playable for white, it would still be a very long drawn game probably. So after Chernyakov played this bishop to f6 move, the story goes that Rashid was thinking about the position for some 40 minutes and that a very excited boy ran over to Chernyakov and he said, well, mister, he sacrificed his queen. And as Chernyakov rushed back to the table, he saw that Rashid played queen captures on f6, and this is a move, well, I mean, I always look for these kind of moves and I don't think I would play this or even get an idea like this, so let's see how the game continues. Obviously, Oleg Chernyakov will accept the queen, but first, he plays knight to e2 check just to discoordinate white's pieces for a bit, so knight captures on e2 and only now he captures on f6, and Rashid brings his knight back, knight to c3. And okay, look at this position. If you ask an engine, the engine will say, okay, black is better. But okay, you have your queen on a5 as black. But white has these two bishops eyeing that king on g8, and he has a potentially very dangerous knight that's ready to jump to d5. Nothing can oppose him. And black's rooks are undeveloped. His bishop is still undeveloped. And well, let's see how Chernyakov handles this, so Chernyakov plays rook e8, and Rashid defends this pawn on e4 actively, he plays knight to d5. So now the pawn can't be captured because of knight f6 check. So Chernyakov plays rook to e6, and now Rashid plays bishop to d4, again going for that f6 pawn, so we have king to g7 defending the pawn. And we have rook a to d1 activating this rook, so we have d6 preparing to develop the bishop. And Rashid plays rook to d3, prepares for a nice rook lift to f3. Bishop to d7 and now rook to f3, again going for that f6 pawn. So we have bishop to b5 attacking the rook on f1. But Rashid first plays bishop to c3 attacking the queen on a5, the queen moves to d8 to help with the defense of the f6 pawn, and now we have knight captures on f6, so we have bishop to e2. And in this position, well, this was probably the losing move, bishop to e2, here, black has to admit that he's not better and that he should probably play something like rook a to c8 and, well, continue this game. But he plays bishop to e2. And after bishop to e2, allows Rashid Nejmatinov to play this beautiful move, knight captures on h7. And what's the idea of knight captures on f7? 
Well, if you look at this position, if the knight is captured then look at this strong bishop's diagonal and look at this rook going to h3. It would be extremely dangerous for black, so Oleg Chernikov plays king to g8. And now Rashid plays rook to h3. So we have rook to e5. Oleg Chernikov would love to exchange this rook for this amazingly strong dark square bishop. But Rashid plays f4. He's not interested in the rook. So Oleg Chernikov plays bishop captures on f1 and king captures on f1. And still, now this rook is attacked on e5 by the pawn. So we have rook to c8. And now again, Rashid does not capture the rook with the f pawn, but he plays bishop to d4. He's protecting this bishop like it's made of gold, so we have b5 and now we have knight to g5, we have rook to c7, protecting that f7 pawn, and this is where Rashid goes all out. He plays bishop captures on f7 with check. Rook captures on f7 and now we have rook to h8, check, king captures on h8 and now knight captures on f7, forking the king, the queen, and the rook on e5, so king to h7, Rashid grabs the queen on d8. Rook captures on e4. Knight to c6, protecting the bishop. Rook captures on f4 with check. King e2, and in this position, Oleg Chernikov finally resigned. And if you look at this position, white has two pieces for the rook and he's also a pawn up. But black has three pawn islands and well, it will be impossible to play this as two pieces by themselves are stronger than the rook and white's pawns are much better, so yeah, an amazing game and what an amazing guy, Rashid Nezmedinov, Lav Polyagevsky said once that he beat Nezmedinov at least a dozen times. So yeah, that was the game, well, now you can tell me if you agree that it's definitely one of the most beautiful games ever played. If you enjoyed my content then don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wish you all the best bye bye see y'all.